Hello everybody and welcome back, I'm Ursa Ryan and these are the results of my latest challenge. 200 turns of your finest Portuguese gold making expertise and I called it at the time, I believed that my attempt was pretty good. I was happy with my attempt, I mean this is the save file as I left it, 370,000 gold saved over 200 of your finest Portuguese turns. At the time I mentioned that one of the things I really enjoy with Civ is kind of doing this thing where you flash a run, like you have a look at a file, you go right this is the challenge and then you have a go at it and you do it first time as well as you can and then you never revisit it. And I was thinking at the time, god if I played this a second time there are so many things I could have improved on and I could have optimised after this point and oh boy were there. So notwithstanding, well actually including my own entry, there were 15 attempts made at this challenge. 15! That is by far the most we've had on any challenge. So thank you everybody for competing and submitting your files. I really hope it was enjoyed and I'm going to obviously poll people going forward as to like another challenge we could be running in January. Any ideas, any maps, anything you can think of that would work well, go for it, let me know. And to put it in context, I came 7th out of 15, which again, not bad I think considering I did it in one attempt. I, I'm pretty happy with that, 7th will do, but oh my word, oh my word were things improved. Right, now, on hindsight, these are the things I was thinking about. Number one, I left a lot of the map unconquered. I mean, I left all five sieves in and I tried to ally with all of them as opposed to, you know, really pushing them in. Now, I could have taken 5, 10, 15, 20, 26 cities on this map because don't forget if you take everybody out it's a score victory so you still don't necessarily win and you can always leave a capital in so that's 25 cities available of which I could get 50 trade routes from so a huge amount of gold capacity was missed out there I mean I was thinking keeping people around for trade routes and for, and for gold pattern on deals I don't think keeping them around ended up being anywhere near as profitable as I had hoped, considering if I'd killed them I could have just, you know, used the gold anyway. So that's something I thought. In hindsight, nine city-states was ample to have trade routes from. Secondly, I totally forgot my legacy government cards, which is really, really annoying. So, I mean, when it comes to these sort of cards, uh, if I have a look at the governments here, you can see Classical Republic is always a good one because that plus one immunity in all of your cities gives you more gold going forward. But I also didn't have Merchant Republic, plus 10% gold in all cities with an established governor. Rookie mistake, that's seven cities which I could have an immediate 10% gold increase on. And don't forget that does stack with trade routes because of the way that trade routes works in Civ 6. I also had things like market economy and triangular trade and, and Raj and all these things that improve trade routes, but the colonial taxes card Quite frankly, I was just ignoring and it was just stupid of me. Stupid. I had so many of my routes going from Port Ryan, my capital, which was a really good city and I had some really good gold routes coming from it, but there was also some really bad gold routes coming from it. And actually, had I sent the trade routes from another continent, so i.e. any other place on this map, you know, you can see Pangaea, this other continent in the middle would have been a fantastic place, but equally all... Of these prongs, the, so the right hand one, top left, top, uh, you know, bottom left, those would have immediately been increasing all of my gold from them by 25%. So, again, really, really stupid. I also really failed to take advantage of the industries. I had, I think, one product from a silver corporation, but I had a gems corporation that I just wasn't using. I could have been funneling trade routes out of Sorry Canada and Sorry Mali in order to get these products out super quickly, and I could have been funneling them back. So whilst I was happy with my entry, there were massive ways that it could be improved. And what I'm going to do is instead of showing you the top three, I'm going to show you fourth place, because this is probably the most similar to how I played the game. Now this is Darth Yoda, you came fourth, you have a gold award because you beat my gold score but unfortunately you miss out on the podium places but this gives you an idea of the sort of map that I could have really done and, and you can see domination has really come slightly heavier, 879,000 gold so that's easily doubled my score, well done. 
great result, but actually you can see that in the 48 trade routes here. I think, what did I have, 32? So another 16? Not quite fully developed, but you can see there's all these cities down here, all of the Congo cities and Mali cities, and you were kind of pushing a little bit into Sweden, but you left the other three alone, which I get, you know, you need someone to raid, you need someone to trade with. There's a sort of balance to be had here. I love looking at all these traders. Oh, brilliant. But you can see how many more products there are. This is the big difference. And this is what I regret from my run the most. Like so many gold yield products here, Beja, Lisbon. I mean, in fact, if we have a look at all of the monopolies or sorry, the corporations that are producing these things, so the gems ones here is, which city is that one being belonged to? Okay, Visery. So this has got 87 productions. So that was kicking one of those out every like six turns when needed. That's a huge difference, a huge difference from what I was doing. Uh, and again, Porta Delgada, the city has only got 40 production. Yeah, I can see that. Look, production focuses on. I can see exactly what you're doing. Oh man, this is the biggest regret. The biggest regret I have from my run. 153 production on that city. That's why the silver's being kicked out of that one so quickly. Yeah, makes a huge difference. What um, heroes did you get? You got Hercules and Himiko. Himiko was good. I enjoyed Himiko. Um, and you got Simbad. I wonder if Simbad, I mean, Simbad probably got quite more like early gold than late game gold. Really good at clearing barbarians. But once you get later into the game, Simbad's still good. But that like 400 gold every time you get a journey and 600 whenever you get a fortune, it begins to become less and less important. Not that gold is either unimportant, but beginning of the game is when Simbad really excels. I regret not getting Hercules. That would have really, really helped to get that early game expansion going by popping down harbors. I think Darth Yoda mentioned that they had gone for a jungle pantheon holy site, which is, you know, actual religion on this game. I'm always proud, always proud when somebody gets a religion going. I wonder how much you feel that actually helped the run. Always difficult to say, isn't it? But you can see the level of trade routes here. There's a couple of hundred gold routes just flittering around. The one, Faro. Where's Faro here? And I think that's because it's on another continent. And it's, oh, it's got the Panama Canal. Beautiful. I love any game with the Panama Canal and it's always pointless. And because of that, it's never pointless. You can see you've got Raj, you've got Colonial Texas, 1,200 gold. Look how much better that is than my attempt on that. I mean... Oh, it would have been brilliant. But again, no, um, oh, you've got autocratic, autocratic legacy, but you don't have the other legacy card. I wonder if that could have just edged it forward a little bit. Monarchic legacy, you went monarchy rather than, um, what's the other one called? Mer Merchant Republic. Again, I say this with no end of like, I appreciate that I did not optimize this perfectly myself. So, you know, take this criticism or improvement as you will you clearly have beaten me but yeah that that is a lot you can see a lot of the differences in action between my run and the more perfect run but you were fourth place let's have a look at third this is a mexicarman or de blender or yan i'm so sorry i butcher your name every single time and the first thing you can immediately see apart from the 2.6 million gold i mean what the hell? And the fact that it's 44,000 coming in per turn, which is just absolutely ridiculous. You can see immediately that more conquest has happened on this map. Three people have been left in, but England has totally gone, as has Canada. I can see Hercules just dotting around there, which means that you did get Hercules to build districts. I do think that probably was the meta. Maui to put more luxuries down. Again, that's where I went on the game. I think that was quite a good technique, but those are the only two you got. Okay, so not not as fundamentally hero slanted as I as I would have believed. 66 trade routes. Wow, that's a lot more packed into this map. That is a, you know, somebody who's taken all of the cities and has gone to great lengths to put, you know, full improvements down on each one in order to maximize those yields, maximize those cities and, and all the trade routes where possible. That's impressive. That's always impressive. And oh my word, you can see the rate of these routes. There are some very decent plus 129 routes here. Wow, that's nuts. Plus 145 from Faro. Where's Faro on this particular map? There it is, in the center. Yeah, I think that is the play. Sending a lot of your trade routes from those central cities. A 135 route, 165 from Faro as well. I mean, whoa, some of these city-state routes are absolutely redonkulous. But 44,000 gold. 
I mean, that is crazy. Crazy money per turn. Where is that all coming from? Faro, Ponta Delgada, you've got Combra, and you've got Guimaraes as well. These four cities are all in the four figures. I mean, this, your fourth most... But <laughs> the economy in your fourth best city, right, is better than my empire. That just goes to show you how that's it. But, but Faro, Ponta, Combra, where are these? So there's the city, there's the city, and there's the city. They're the central ones. They're quite built up. They've got, uh, I think in each one, you've got lovely sort of the, the duplicates of having the commercial hub and the harbour. I think there are some wonders in the city. The Torre de Belém in Combra. Okay, that, that does help the trade routes as well. You've got trading hubs I can see being popped down. Haven't bothered to improve the aluminium and things because this is a bedded tile. I mean, that's somebody who's focused and I love that. I love it. The Great Zimbabwe. Oh yes, of course. Of course. Plus two gold from every bonus resource within three tiles of the city and in this city's territory. That's a few bonus resources. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I love that. That is pre-planned. That, uh, that is incredible. And yeah, look, 9,668 gold per turn from colonial taxes and another 3,600 from the mercantile legacy. I, I really feel like I mucked up on that one. Not putting that card in was just a mistake. I mean, this just shows you just how efficient these sort of runs were. They've gone for Visselbanken as the card without going for the Democracy Legacy. Because even though you get more food and production from Democratic Legacy, it's pointless. So why spend the effort doing it? I love that. I love that sort of efficiency. It's it's brilliant. Oh, look at all the trades as well. Look at all those envoys. Mm. Oh yeah, you can see as well. Okay, there are the products. All the 25% gold yield ones in all of the decent cities. I mean... This is this is why I, I I missed out on this bit. I I totally missed out on that bit. I regret that probably more than anything else on my run, and it helps because 350 production means you can be kicking out one of these products like every two turns. I think they're 500 production. I mean it just it makes such a difference. Oh, and Ponta as well has got one. Oh man, I've missed so much on these, so much on these. Oh wow, look at these. <laughs> look at the borders. Funkel has been given this corporation, so they just wrapped the land around. I love that. Oh, it's it's a thing of beauty. So my question to you as the third place person, are you happy with your run? Would you have done more combat? Like, would you have taken over another five, six cities by pegging the AI back a little bit more to get some more trade routes to push you closer to three million? Or do you think that would have had a detrimental effect? It's... I know it's always difficult to say. I mean, the thing I'm, I'm massively impressed of is just how far down the tech and the civic tree you've got. Like, that's way into future civic there. That's brilliant. Like, it's so much more effective than what I did. Oh, what a run. What a run. Look at that. A monopoly on turn 64. That is really, really impressive. Industry on turn 83. It's pretty good. And the first corporation on turn 131. Wow. I mean, that feels quite late into the game, but that's 69 turns in which to make the products up. I mean, that that's awesome. Oh, I'm in awe. I'm in absolute awe. But you came third. Let's have a look at place number two. Look. Now, you know, Do you know does. that a Keep game going. is optimized when Big Ben is literally the first thing that pops up just before the gold screen. That is one optimized 50% Big Ben rush. Nice. It's Gumball or Zack Zack Attack or whatever you're calling yourself today. Hello, eight point no two point eight. Sorry, not eight point something. Two point eight eight million. Oh, oh, that's a lot of gold. Imagine a game where you just got to spend that much gold. And you know what the big difference is between this file and the last file? Look, more cities, specifically like three more cities, less trade routes though. That's the crazy thing. There are actually less trade routes here, and there is less gold per turn. More science, though. You've got to the end of the tech tree and also the civic tree, so that that is complete. So there's a couple of differences here, but you know some similarities. <laughs> Raise the stonks. Now this, I, I I have really enjoyed this. I really did enjoy this. There's a religion in this game as well, and religious community. Again, I wonder how effective that was. Plus two gold to cities with holy sites, an additional plus two gold for every building in the holy site district. Do you find that the AI did that enough? Or was it not really worth it? I guess having the Congo in the game is, is not brilliant for that. But Canada is. City-states, not so much. But Canada, definitely. 
like, and it looks like the trade routes are just consistently brilliant here. So many are above 100 gold per turn. Like, compared to the last save file with um, Mexicanum, the, the actual raw gold on the highest routes is a little lower. Like, your, your best routes aren't like 150, they're like 135, but consistently they're all above three figures. Whereas before, I think the trade routes like tapered off a little bit. I don't know. I wonder how much of a difference that makes. Let's have a look at the cards. Okay, already you can see just how many extra cards there are. So there's some good wonder playing going on there. Mercantile Legacy is doing brilliant work there. You've got... Oh, actually, hang on. I think I'm... Right, hang on. I think what's happening here is it's showing a little bit less gold because there's an extra economic policy slot here. What do we reckon? What would what would give you a fair? Like, should we give you liberalism? I don't know if there's anything better to pick up that's just going to give you a bit of a fair one. But I wonder if that was just lowering that just a little bit. Yeah, forty thousand. Okay, so it was a little higher than it would have been. And there are only three cities this time. Although again, six cities are into six figures, so this is, the gold is spread out a little bit more. But three are your kind of like your big ones. Oh look, <laughs> Maui coin, Petra coin, Night City, Truffley Town. These are the ones. If it's got a dollar sign in front of it, then their meaning business like this night city truffley town maui coin oh these are good ones again nothing on the home continent that's that's good to see where is it petra coin ah oh, petra i knew somebody would build it Ugh. oh look at these roots oh i just have to press that just to watch it go that's that's a beautiful thing and look at those products as well yeah there's a lot of products that have been made in this game. I'd say probably a slightly stronger product game. I wonder how much that helped to just accelerate the early stages of the game. It's At the moment, the biggest difference I can see between this file and the, and the previous file was just a little bit more domination was done. Turn 79 on the industry, it's similar, but perhaps just a little bit after. But corporations on turn 128, that was a few turns before. So again, perhaps it was just that slightly early attacking that really did shoot the, well, sort of catapult the gold through to the later stages of the game. But I mean, I say all of this with the sense of just wonder. There are some beautiful cities here. Beautiful cities. And this actually makes me want to just sort of stack a load of stuff and use this Colonial Taxes card a little bit more. It's, it's beginning to make me see just the pure raw gold capacity, especially with Mercantile Legacy here, just how much gold can be stuck in. To one city like it's it's staggering when you look at it I'm I, my mind is blown and of course do you feel free to comment something if I'm missing something about your run there's so much to look at I feel like I'm missing little key bits you can illuminate us a little bit more no Hercules on this run no Himiko on this run but Hippolyta was taken I guess for some some good old war Oya Simbad Sun Wukong I imagine Sun Wukong is always the last to go I feel but all helps with the war but yeah there, there are some just brilliant play going on here but this is not the best save file no that goes to our first place victor here we go another big ben loading so again the crazy optimization and can i just say i appreciate all of the railroads here like you have my humble gratitude that the railroads have been respected for the integral part of Civ 6 that they are. It's beautiful stuff to see. And again, there is even more war on this map than before. Even more. Why does England have the Congo's cap? You know, I'm not even going to ask, but this is... Yeah, so more war has happened. You've only left two people alive and they're both your allies. Poor old Marley has been pegged back here and you've got England pegged back. But okay, 74 trade routes. That is insanely good. Let me just stick liberalism in because again it's doing that thing where Big Ben is it's taking away the just sheer raw amazingness that is the 47,000 gold per turn. <laughs> anyway, Platypus was very kind. Did I say it was Platypus? It's Platypus. You've won. Congratulations. I was do that. I get so distracted. I actually forget to say who's actually won. They have left this handy guide to what they were doing. I went to war around turn 100 conquering Canada, then Sweden, then the Congo. The first hero... Uh, was Hercules, followed by Maui, who was crucial to set up a really good Great Zimbabwe City. I imagine we'll see a lovely Great Zimbabwe City somewhere. Yeah, here it is. GameStop. Of course it's GameStop. Of course it's GameStop. And look at all of these bonus resources. Yep. Yep. Fair play. I focused all my primary gold generation on cities that were on foreign continents. I mean, you can clearly see that by the fact that this card, Colonial Taxes, is giving 10,000 gold per turn. My hat is doffed to you, sir. 
After that it was just stacking up as many multipliers as possible including getting my immunities up as soon as I unlocked the tier 2 and 3 EC and WP buildings. Okay, Warlord's Throne helped me to build things quicker the second half of the game. I made heavy use of Moksha's ability to buy districts, of course, using the Faith. That stacked up with the crazy Faith generation from one of the great merchants, but I think gives you Faith for all of your routes with greats, you know, with, with the city-states. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. As a t GameStop has got a 165 trade route to Timbuktu. That is crazy. That is mad. 145. Fat stacks. Bitcoin. I have to say, I love the naming scheme here. We've got all of the cryptocurrencies on this wing. You've got all of the just fat stacks and cash money. Oh, I love it. Cheese, cheddar and bacon. I, I love that. I love that massively. Scratch, moolah, loot. Ah, I mean, <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed you were, my friend. This is just a wonderful thing. I would strongly advise if you want to improve your Civ game, come and have a look at some of these save files, especially this one, and come and have a peek at just the inner workings of what takes just genius, genius gold accumulation. Imagine, I know this was a, for a challenge, right? But if you were doing any game, especially like a multiplayer game, and you had like 10 to 40,000 gold per turn coming in, I know, I know it's harder to put these things up in multiplayer because people will gang up on you and whatever. But imagine if you had 47,000 gold to be like, oh, you know what, someone's, someone's attacking me. Oh, well, let's just buy in a nuclear submarine. I can buy six armadas per turn. How's that for you? Like, just yes but yeah look at all of these products the products have been maximized pretty quickly industry on turn 79 again very close to the others there very close i wonder when corporations kicked in there seems to be quite a good um sort of show of, of just whereabouts in the run you were turn one two two yeah fair play that is so much earlier that's like 10 turns earlier that's got to be the difference surely getting those products getting those monopolies going as quickly as possible. Having a look at the gold yields, there's 12,000 gold per turn coming in from GameStop and they've got five trading HUDs. Five of them. GameStop, AMD, TSLA, Tesla, I think, right? Fat stacks, NVIDIA. I know, I know my stocks. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible on Reddit. I, I should really get and get more into what the youths are doing with their money, but oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, you can just see, making the center of the island, the trading hub, really plays off where all the continents are on this map really makes a big difference you can look at these two cities just perfectly poised to be on um the different continents and then this city and flx i believe this is a city that wasn't being used for gold generation because it is on technically your home continent it's just genius genius players so there we have it i feel like i'm missing out on some of the you know subtleties of this run can i just say also you had a whole 21 gold per turn coming out from units i mean oh you clearly could have had two, three million five hundred and sixty-nine thousand two hundred and eighty gold, you fool. <laughs> but still, this was just, I uh, just mind-boggling, and I, I am amazed. Thank you so much, everybody, for taking part. I've put the results up on the Discord. Come and celebrate with me and everybody. Look forward to the next challenge, and please do have a look at these save files. I mean. They were absolutely nuts. Come and learn. Because you know what? Every time a challenge happens, I learn an awful lot. And I need to get far better at this game. Because there are some strategies here that, oh my, are absolutely crazy. Until next time, I'll see you all later. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Midnight Oil, Trafidaspi, Paul Coffey, Senjik, and Kroger Brand Trailmix for all of your support on Patreon. Thank you very much.